We are 16 minutes away from crowning a champion here in Collinsville. Hawks will have the basketball to start the second half. Gannett, Wilkinson, Weathers, Langley, and Rickman on the floor for Collinsville. Starters on there for Lincoln, Ebelair, Perry, Hop, Block, and Cook. Gannett with the dribble on the left side. Now he's picked it up, watched by Cook. Left wing, Langley gets it back to Gannett. Inside, Rickman turns in the lane. Jumper will not go down, hop the rebound. Yeah, Rickman was held to just four points and two rebounds. And as we mentioned in the first half, much of the Railer run that got them the lead was done while he was on the Kayhawk bench. Ebelair down low, kicks it back to Hop, back to Ebelair. Great ball movement around. Perry, top of the key three yeah, is good. Great ball movement there. Uh, had a couple of looks right there, but made that extra pass for Perry at the top of the key, and he was able to knock it down. 32-24, under seven left in the third. Langley, Gannett. You know, I don't think we give Perry enough credit, you know, because he's, he's just kind of that quiet one out there on the court. You know, we're always talking about Cook and Block, and, you know, Perry's had a couple big shots, you know, this season as well. Collinsville's three is missed. Railers track down the rebound. Chance to widen that lead with six and a half to go. Cook comes to the left side in the corner, gets it from Perry. Perry back. Over to Cook. He spots for three. Ow. Gavin with a big, strong rebound, and he'll pull it back out. Perry is wanting it. He's feeling it. Give me that ball, Gavin. Dribbles in, top of the key. Gavin makes a move. Slips it over to Will. Back on top. Perry fires off. In and out. Oh, Rickman and high out. for the rebound. Good look. Halfway in. Popped right back out. 5.50 to go, third quarter, Lincoln on top, 32-24. No one really in any foul trouble for the Railers. Earlier today, that was a bit of an issue. Gannett lobs to Rickman, Rickman turns, kicks it out to Langley, right side, top of the key, up and good. Yeah, you gotta get on him, he's another one that can shoot the three. So it's back to a five point game, Railers with the advantage, 5.20 to go. Ebelair right side high to Perry. Peyton on the right wing in front of Coach Neil Alexander, in front of the bench. Cook to hop at the high post, kicks back out to Will. Aaron, top of the key, going to drive down, bounces off to Gavin. Contact, it's going to yeah. go down, and he is fouled. Well, I don't know how Gavin did that. He was, <laughs> I thought he was too far under the basket, even behind the basket, and he was able to get it up there get the fall that was a good strong move by block and better yet it's uh the second foul on rickman yeah when gavin bounced into him gavin bounced back a little bit yeah but I, got it to go down there you go three point play the old-fashioned way 35 27 gavin now with 18 as we're just under five minutes to go in the third lincoln on top 35 27. Langley, almost a dangerous pass, and it is stolen away by Gavin. Stolen away and saved by Gavin. 440 left. Ebelair. Ebelair's about due to hit one. He's scoreless. Perry he's picked up his dribble, needs some help. Gets it to Peyton on the sideline. Double team coming. Peyton's going to drive the baseline, kick it over to Gavin. Hop to Will. Yeah, not much. Gavin three. No good. Ball tipped around, and Aaron Hop tries to grab it, but it's picked up. Nope, still not picked up. Loose, and Hop had it. What? Hoppy grabbed it, but uh, just before it popped up into him, they called Peyton Ebeler for the foul on the reach. And it was just, to me, both teams going <laughs> both for it. Both teams going for the ball. I mean, he didn't really even have possession of it. He is basically sitting on it, and he just went down and picked it up. Yeah, I don't like that call. 4.05 left in the third quarter. Lincoln, 35, 
Collinsville nice. 27, Gavin with the tip away steal, dives to the floor to tip it back to JP. Good hustle from the Railers, and you wouldn't expect anything different. No, and that's just going all out after the ball. Gavin tipped it away and then dove for it. Hop to Gavin, Gavin fakes, kicks back out to Will near the top of the key. Four, three, off the front of the rim, no. Rickman high for the rebound for the Cahawks. Yeah, I don't know if you got a wrench in your uh, little box there. We need to tighten that rim up. And Peyton, I think, is going to get whistled for another grab. He was there with Will for a double team on the ball handler. So Peyton picks up his second quickly. Perry will check out Isaiah Bowers in. Yeah, all the years we've been coming down here, that rim has rattled like that every time. Yeah, I don't. It, it's almost too much give on it. You know, you're not getting that true bounce off the rim, and it, it just sounds bad. 3:20 to go. Third quarter. Wilkinson to Weathers. Lob down low for Rickman, turns and tries to get it away. And it's going to be no good as uh, Gavin was there to contest the shot. Railers come back this way, up eight. Three minutes to go in the third. Gavin on the baseline to Isaiah, back out to Peyton. Nice ball movement around. Get it to Hop in the corner. Yeah, Isaiah's better. He's better get out of that lane. He hasn't set up that yet. There he clears. And then the ball's thrown away. Langley with a spin move. That's no good. Rebound up the glass. That's no good, but Rickman's there for the tip dunk. Thirty-five, 25-29, 2.25 to go. This Collinsville team, they came in at 6-6. Six and six. They will not go away. Will Cook's three back rim, no. Rebound down to Collinsville. Yeah, Cook, a little cold right now. 2.06. Collinsville with a little bit of the momentum back here. Only Gannett, down six. Gannett to Rickman turns. The jumper will not go. Rebound to Gavin. Yeah, we'll let him take that shot all day because yeah. that means he's not there to grab the board. Yep. Ebel air between the circles. Gets it to hop, gets it right back. Cook the three. That one's no good, but Isaiah Bowers fighting for the rebound. And they're going to say last touched. Uh, it was out of bounds by Collinsville, so it'll stay with the Railers. And Rickman going to the bench. We'll see if uh, Lincoln can maybe extend the lead here a little bit, up by six. Last time uh, Rickman went to the bench, we were able to go on a little bit of a run right there. Approaching 90 seconds left in the third quarter. Lincoln 35, Collinsville 29, Gavin for three. Shot it long, Bowers the rebound, kicks back out to Hop. Back to Gavin, Gavin goes by his defender, goes off the glass and good. About a foul. No foul call, but Gavin's strong enough to finish. Now extend that press a little bit. 37-29. What are they calling there? Foul's going to oh, be whistled oh. again on Peyton Ebelair. He wasn't even around him. I thought they were going to get an offensive foul, extending the arm, and unfortunately Peyton picks up his third foul, and he's going to have to check out for the rest of this quarter. Ebelair will check out. The Railers have three fouls in this half. All have been on Peyton. Yeah, and I don't see that one at all. Davis skips it across to Maiden into the contest for the first time. In the corner, three on the way, shoots up an air ball. Rebound down to Gavin, to JP, who's on his back, and he gets it back to Gavin. <laughs> Gavin just kind of checks it and gives it to Perry. Perry gives it back to him as he's sitting on his bottom. And Lincoln will hold for the last shot of the quarter. And it seems like uh, we're, we've been in this position uh, each time this game, Jeff, where we have the ball running down to third and even the, the first and come out this following quarter and have possession. So we'll see if we can get something going here. Under 30 seconds to go. Railers up eight. They have the basketball and will start the fourth with the basketball. Hop to Gavin, down to 15. They'll wait till it gets down to about 11 and then they'll run something. Now they'll call the play. 
Hop to Cook, now to Gavin, back to Aaron. We're down to five. Inside Bowers, kicks back out. Gavin rises for three Got and it. connects. Gavin blocked for three, Lincoln up by 11. At the end of three, Lincoln 40, Collinsville 29. Back for the fourth in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. <laughs> Again, thanks to all the sponsors of Railer Basketball, including Eaton Corporation, Jane's Hair Salon, Stacy's Family Pharmacy, and Reps Gym as the Railers get ready to start what we hope is a very happy end of quarter. Railers up 40-29 with the basketball eight minutes away from a title here in Collinsville. But still, a lot of basketball to go. A lot of basketball to go. Uh, Many things can go wrong. And a foul is going to be whistled on Gannett. That'll be his second, <coughs> only the second on Collinsville. And again, it puts yourself in a position where if you're Collinsville, not many fouls. You need to be a little bit more aggressive, if for nothing else, to draw you closer to if you need to put the Railers in the bonus, you're not waiting until the last minute. Yeah, and the other side of that is if you're too aggressive, Lincoln, you know, they got that back door that we haven't seen a whole lot. But, you know, they start extending that defense and being a little more aggressive. Lincoln, uh, they have the capability of, you know, making them pay for that as well. Cook, Bowers, Hop, Ebelair, block on the floor for the Railers. Only three Railers have scored so far in the first three quarters. JP with six, Will Cook with 11, Gavin Block with 23. As far as Collinsville, they scored 19 in the first quarter. In the next two quarters combined, they've only managed 10. And we've seen the Railers do this an awful lot. They find ways to run clock, get open looks. Bowers tried to kick in, and they're going to say it was knocked out of bounds by the Cahawks. Yeah, he got a little deeper under the basket there, nowhere to go. I'd like to see maybe just kind of pull that back out and reset. Inbounds to Hop. A minute gone by. Hop over to Gavin. Up for three. Got Good it. for three. Gavin Block. This. You know, he should get MVP and then all the other awards as well because he, that kid's amazing. It's just effortless. And oh, oh, Gannett tripped over his own feet, and Peyton's picked up his fourth foul. You know, Peyton's got four fouls, and I'm not sure he's committed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that there definitely, Peyton's just playing good defense, and the kid tripped on his own feet, and Peyton's going to call for the foul. He's going to set for a few minutes anyway as Perry checks back in the game. Now Isles gets up. Six and a half to go. Railers up 43-29, largest lead of the night. And if you're in Collinsville, I think this is danger territory. If you, if you don't start closing the gap now, this one could get out of hand yeah. quick. Davis back out, driving in. Davis trying to work against Gavin. Gavin straight up, it's fine. and a foul is going to be whistled on block. That'll be number one on Gavin. And, you know, something I haven't figured out yet, Jeff, is Rickman's still on the bench. You know, you'd think the big guy would be out there, but uh, I don't know. I guess that's why I'm a broadcaster and not a coach. Davis, first free throw, missed it badly. Garrett Isles in. JP will take a seat. Yeah, if, if Rickman looks like he is the one guy that presents the most trouble for the Railers, you would think he would be out there as much as you could could stand. Yeah, he came out in the third quarter uh, with about a minute and a half, two minutes to go, and he hasn't seen the court yet. Bowers, Hop, Isles, Cook, block on the floor for the Railers. Pass, they try to get it into Herod Hop, and Isles' pass is tipped away. Turnover by the Railers. Collinsville down the other way, down 13 with six minutes to go. Davis goes against Bowers, kicks it out. Lefty three. I think that might have been partially tipped by Cook. Collinsville recovers. Good tipped hand. away again by Bowers. Good nice hands, job. And then lost out of bounds as Gavin and Aaron Hop collided. And so it's going to stay with the Cahawks. 
Well, that's all right. And here comes Rickman with 5.42 to go. Davis will check out. So again, at the beginning of the game when they had their two big guys in, that's when they had their most success. And I don't think they've both been out there together no, the rest of the game. They haven't. And I don't know if it's because of Lincoln's quickness, but I don't know. It's uh, It baffles me. 540 left. Railers up 43-30. Kinnett, left side three, back rim, no. Blaine over, hops back for the rebound. So the Railers giving Collinsville a number of opportunities. Yeah, third and fourth chances. Gannett looking for Rickman, but the Railers have done a great job on him. Now they dump it into Rickman. He goes in, and Gavin's going to get whistled for the foul as Rickman went up into him. And for Gavin, that'll be his second. Six-team foul, and I think Rickman's going to the line shooting two. Yeah, Gavin kind of slapped his left hand down a little bit. I think if he would have stayed straight up, he would have been all right. But whenever that arm comes down in that motion, they're going to call a foul on you. 5-14 left. First free throw by Rickman on the way is up and good. 43-31, Raylor lead is at 12. Still a lot of basketball to be played. Rickman's been held to just seven points in this contest. Free throw, no good. Block the rebound. 43-31, Railers up 12. Approaching the five minute mark. Will backs the dribble out, now spins away from the defense. Over to Hop. Swinging around far side to Ebelair. Ebelair lobs it over to Hop. He, those cross court passes yeah, are scary. They are. And Bounce to Cook. Gavin turns, fires it to Hop. Four and a half to go. Railers have run 30 seconds off here. On the baseline, Bowers dribbles along the baseline, gives it to Aaron Hop. His pull-up will not go down. Blaine the rebound. So Collinsville still an opportunity. They hit a long one there within 10. Blaine, they try to get it to Rickman. The ball is tipped away, but right back to Wilkinson. Long three on the way. That's up and good for Midget. Four oh four to go. Timeout taken. We will keep it here and remind you that Railer basketball is brought to you in part by Lincoln IGA, Big R, Bright Idea Screen Printing, and Timbercrest Veterinary Services. As part of the sponsorship team, bringing you Railer basketball. Four oh four left in this one, and Scott uh, Collinsville. Uh, Closer than they've been in a while. Just a nine-point game, 43-34. Collinsville with only two team fouls, so I figure their aggressiveness is going to pick up, and uh, Rose is going to have to take care of the basketball. Yeah, uh, able to eat off some time, you know, when we have the ball, but you, you want to get some points, you know, at the end of that. Uh, you know, running down the clock is great, but you want to come away with some points, and uh, just got to play tough on the other end of the, uh, on defense as well because, you know, they're in desperation mode right now. Four minutes left in the game, down by nine, you know, hit a big three there, and, uh, you know, we have to come back and answer. You know, you got to get the momentum back. 4.04 to go. Railers up 43-34. Only one player in foul trouble for the Railers. That's Peyton Ebelair. He has four fouls. So after the timeout, Railers look to inbound. Gavin gets it into Will Cook. Ebelair across the timeline to Bowers. Skips it across. Dangerous pass, and it is thrown away. Yeah, you want to take care of that. You know, don't throw that across her like that. You still have your dribble. And if need be, you've got your timeouts. Yeah, absolutely. So a turnover by the Railers, and Collinsville feels himself getting in this one a little bit closer. Dumped down for Rickman. Nice catch on the baseline. Kicks out to Wilkinson. His three from the okay. top of the key left it short. That would have been big that for the Cahawks. Big. 
Fortunately for the Railers, he missed it. We come away with it. Now we need to get to the basket. We need some points on this possession. Ebelair over to Cook. Hop. Back to Ebelair. Ebelair, out to block. Top of the key to Hop. Gavin cuts in. 3.15 to go. Railers up nine. Ebelair underneath Bowers lets his defender go there off the glass go. and in. Yeah. Good move by the freshman. I thought Rickman was going to get that block there, but uh, he just didn't collapse quick enough, and the freshman able to lay it off the glass for an easy two. And you know, with a, in a championship game like this, that's not as easy a shot as you would think it would be. No, because you have to. That's oh, that's going to be an offensive foul, right, yeah. Yeah, Gavin set. See if Gavin's okay down there. Gavin took one right in the chest from the uh, shoulder of Rickman. Rickman picks up his third. 2.50 to go. Gavin may need a second to catch his breath. Yeah, he took a shot there. They wouldn't have called that. Hop. There you go. Cross the timeline to Bowers. Back out. There you go. 2.40 left. Cook. Ebelair now to Gavin. Gavin thought about the three, didn't take it. Back out to Ebelair. High post. Gavin corner has his three rejected away by Rickman. <laughs> yeah, you won't see that happen too often. But you know, if you're Collinsville and the fans think it's great, but if you block it inbounds and yeah, get possession, right. it helps your team more. It's still our ball. Into the backcourt, they throw it, 220 left. Railers up 11, 45-34. Ebelair over to block. Hoppy catches at the free throw line, watch it dribble. Get rid of it. Hop over to Cook. Lobs it back to Ebelair. Ooh, Peyton almost dragged that pivot foot. Two minutes to go. Bowers dribbles the baseline. Under two. Railers up 11. Just a little playing a little bit of hot potato right now. And you don't, you don't, the way to beat a zone is to pass. You know, you saw Coach Greg Alexander over there yelling, you're dribbling too much. And there's a foul. Then a foul is going to be whistled on Collinsville. Foul on Midget. That'll be his first, fourth on the team. Collinsville's taking a timeout. They're taking time. We'll take it with them. 1.42 to go in this one. Railers up 11. Back in 30 seconds with more Lincoln Railer basketball. Just a 30 on this one, Paula. Just a 30. Sponsors of Railer Basketball include Lincoln College, St. Clair's Manor, BB Milling Company, and Future Stars and Impact Studios cheerleading and tumbling. And the Railers just 142 away from uh, getting the championship here at Collinsville. And Scott, I don't know if it means anything, but it looks like a few of the people wearing purple are getting an early start in the parking lot. Yeah, pretty quiet around here. And, you know, Lincoln was able to take the crowd out of it. And we've got a foul that's going to be whistled. That's going to go against Weathers for Collinsville, his first. Fifth-team foul. 1.37 to go. Gavin's getting held all over the place trying to get open for the basketball. <laughs> he was and looking for the ref to call a timeout. And Peyton calls a timeout. So we will keep it here again, 1.37 to go. Again, thanking some of the sponsors for Railer Basketball includes Grau Incorporated, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, and Blades Hair and Nail Salon. 45-34. 
We've been stuck on that for quite a while, but as long as the clock's ticking down and it sticks that way, I'll be good with that. Absolutely. Bowers, Hop, Cook, Block on the floor for the Railers. Peyton Ebeler ready to inbound right in front of assistant coach Greg Alexander. Ebeler gets it to Block. Over to Cook. Cook into the front court. 90 seconds left. Cook, the lane opens up, kicks back out to Bowers. Bowers will dribble. Hand to Gavin. Gavin foul is going to be whistled. That'll go against Weathers, his second, sixth team. Well, in case it becomes important, just so you know, Gavin has 26. His career high is 30. I have a feeling he might be making a couple trips to the line here. Hop holds his position, and a foul is going to be whistled. That'll go against Wilkinson, his first, seventh team foul, and the Railers are going to the line shooting bonus. It'll be Aaron Hopp, the junior, with 1.18 to go. Aaron's first free throw on the way is good. Hopp's first point of the night. But that certainly does not diminish what he has done on the court here for the Railers. No. Hopp, second. That one rolls off no good. 46-34, 1.15 left. Gannett to Wilkinson. They're going to have to start looking for threes and quick. Rickman back out. Three on the way. That's going to be no good. Bowers tried to grab the rebound. Rickman grabbed it and had it taken away. Knocked there by Gavin. That should do it right there. Gavin into the front court to hop. 50 seconds left. Railers lead is 12. Gavin dribbling it out. Backs near the timeline. Railer Nation comes to their feet. That is going to do it, Coke. Yeah. And they're going to back off a little bit. Now they're going to come out. Cook over to Gavin. 30 seconds to go. And he's grabbed by Rickman. Why? Do you want to get extend the lead? Gavin at the line shooting one in bonus. He has 26. 28 seconds to go. Gavin free throw is good. Forty-seven thirty-four. Spins out, no good. Railer lead 13 with 23 seconds to go. Lob down for Rickman. Kicks it back over to Gannett. Gannett tries to step in. Instead, a long high arcing three. That's going to be no good. Cook's going to track down the rebound, and that should do it. That will do it. Ahead to Hop, and Hop will hold in the corner. Railer Nation applauds. The Railers applaud. The final buzzer sounds. And that's a Railer winner. 47 34. The Railers improved to 11 2 on the season. Collinsville drops to 6 and 7. And the Railers, in back to back years, have won the Schnucks Holiday Classic. This one by a score of 47 34. 13 assists, only five turnovers, three blocks, eight steals, and 119 minutes. So that's Gavin Block's tournament numbers. I believe he impressive. was also selling popcorn at some point. He <laughs> yeah. did just about everything yeah. else. And, you know, that, that's, that's pretty impressive. And those are in games that are blowouts where. You don't have to step up and hit those points at the end because you're already up 20. So for him to, you know, surpass those numbers, it's it's amazing and well deserving of the MVP. So again, uh, the Railers get the win. They've got the championship trophy as usual. Uh, I think Jordan Perry has the trophy because he always seems to be the one carrying around the trophy. Uh, the players get their medals. Gavin and Will with uh, their uh, all-tournament team selection. And so back-to-back uh, -back years, the Railers win the tournament. Back-to-back -back years, the Railers have the all-tourney or the uh, MVP. Mm -hmm. Last year it was Max Cook. This year, Gavin Block. And, uh, you know, we always talk about when the uh, 
when you come to Collinsville, you really get a good feel for what kind of team you've got and what this team is capable of. Well, it's, it, it's capable of some good things. Yeah, it's kind of deja vu. I mean, we saw this last year. Same type of team, uh, different roles. You know, you don't have an Edward Bowlby. You don't have a Max Cook. Uh, but they, they tend to fill in the pieces. And, you know, if you told me that you, we're going to come down to Collinsville again and dominate like this, I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, that had been great. That's exactly what Lincoln did. Uh, you know, very impressive game tonight again against Collinsville. Uh, and, man, just my hats go off to the Railers and the coaching staff for doing one heck of a job. 47-34. Railers get a 13-point win. We will take another timeout and be back with more of our post game. The Josh Common at Ground Incorporated and Schneider Chiropractic Center post game show. We'll be back in two minutes. This is Lincoln, Railer basketball. Back at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium along with Scott Kirby, Jeff Benjamin with you as the Railers. Extended post-game show here as the Railers get the victory. Final score of 47-34. All-tournament team member Will Cook, tournament MVP Gavin Block. And it uh, certainly was... Uh, you know, we say that they, you know, Gavin and Will made the all-tournament team, but every year they come down here, Lincoln is an all-tournament team. Yeah, and it is, it's team. It's Gavin, yeah, he, he is the go-to guy, but it's not just him. You know, it's the other four kids beside him on the court, and, you know, can't say enough about this team. You know, they've, they've already had their ups and downs this season. And for them to come away with some hardware, it's a great feeling. And I'm just proud of these kids. You know, it's funny. Uh, last year, and again, it, the, the comparisons are certainly unfair. But each tournament they played, they got better. We won Eaton. Then we came down here to Collinsville last year. Won that. This team has won that. And you can see how much better they are now than they were then. Mm -hmm. And what, in about two and a half weeks, we'll be part of the Central State 8 round robin shootout. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that goes. But again, uh, I think the one thing, if there's anything that would concern me, is when we need it, will that depth be there? Because for yeah. the most part, we got we got minutes out of six players. Garrett started getting a few more minutes here this week with this tournament. You know, seven deep, that's, that'll get you through some games. But as the season wears on and the game starts stacking up, when does that start taking a toll? Yeah, it, hopefully it doesn't. But, uh, you know, they're going to get a few days off right now. Uh, they'll you know, have practice. We're going to go to Normal West on Saturday night. Get a couple of days off, and then we've got a Tuesday night game. Tuesday, a week so, from tonight, we from will tonight. be taking on Springfield, uh, Springfield Southeast. Southeast, and, you know, that's another tough team. Uh, you know, they're over in this tournament, and, you know, any team can play any given night. That's why you play them. But uh, it, it's going to be tough. But uh, I tell you, it's got to be encouraging to see what you saw here in Collinsville. Again, Absolutely. the Railers do the job, and uh, once again, out-rebounding and stuff like that. And the Railers get the victory. We'll have Coach sit down here and talk about this one. Coach, congratulations on the win. Get the tournament championship. Uh, I know a little blurb that was in the uh, souvenir program that you get when you come down to Collinsville. You were quoted as mentioning, saying you were kind of a little surprised that you got the number two seed, but you're going to go down there and play and see what happens. And uh, boy, this team just... They're going to give you everything they can, and uh, today it paid off, and they walk out with the championship. Well, I, I'm really proud of them. Uh, we played basketball this last three days the way I, I feel we can play, and again, uh, we want to get better as the season goes on, but, uh, you know, we had uh, Gavin had an outstanding tournament, uh, Will Cook. Uh, they all did. Peyton Abler ran our team. You know, he doesn't score hardly at all, but I'm telling you, by the time the night's over, he's dogged it. You know, he's been dogged, and so he's taken care of it and, and done a nice thing. So uh, uh, Jordan Perry hit some big shots, uh, hop. I mean, they all, every kid we got had out on the floor, uh, you know, done a great job. Again, playing two games in one day, the way we play, the style we play is really tough. But our kids fought through it. They were really confident taking the floor tonight that they, they were prepared to play. 
And coach, it seemed like when Collinsville went up uh, early, I think uh, their uh, largest lead at one point was uh, 16-8 and then 19-11. You just never really felt this team get rattled. They just took Collinsville's best shot and started closing in. And then Will Cook hitting three after three after three. That was big. You know, I, I don't think I've ever had a shooter like Will. I mean, it makes him, it doesn't bother him. He misses him, it doesn't bother him. And, and you know, he, he feels like the next one's going in. And, uh, boy, I tell you, he had a great tournament and hit some big shots for us and uh, uh, that was big for us but one of the things that he did was he busted his tail at the defensive end as well and uh, that's what makes us good when we have people that are going to play together move our defense together our offense goes together and I think that's what helps make us uh, you know the, the, the success that we have is because of those reasons coach I know you're you're concentrating during the game and coaching but it's always interesting it seems like this Railer crowd really gets behind this team on defense applauding and you know I think there was one possession was a 45 50 second possession for Collinsville and the Railers it seemed like there were six or seven of them out there moving moving and it resulted in Collinsville taking a bad shot and they got the ball back and it just seems like it's so much more appreciated the defense because as you said you know sometimes the shooting's there sometimes it's not but the effort on defense always should be there, and I think they appreciate that. I, I really, you know, I do, and uh, that was uh, unbelievable. And, and, you know, that's a backbreaker when you play defense for that long. You shoot it, they get the, we get the rebound, we go down and score. Uh, that was a, a tremendous series right there, and uh, uh, our guys were really... Uh, uh, they took a lot of pride in their defense. We had some people we felt that uh, wanted to try to show our defense up, and our guys, uh, you know, really bowed their back and played it exceptionally well. Coach, uh, we held some good teams to so some low scores. Yep. I mean, 34 to Collinsville, 27 to Quincy. Uh, you know, again, our closest game, I think, was this one here, 13 points. Well, you take a look at the stats. They had 19 in the first quarter and then five for the next three quarters, so only 15 after the first quarter. And, you know, the Railers did pretty well. There wasn't much scoring in the fourth quarter, but that was okay. You already had the lead, and you just had to get the clock to go. Well, you know, we had a couple big shots, but, uh, you know, when we get uh, things spread out, we can run some clock. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes it gets scary because you pull it too soon, you lose any momentum that you have, but uh, you also got to knock some minutes off that clock to get the game over. And, Coach, again, according to the stats from uh, Collinsville, another game out-rebounded them 18-17. Well, that, that's remarkable. Our guys are doing a great job. Uh, you know, now we, we, told, we look to the new year and, uh, you know, we got Normal West and Normal West is huge across the board. They play a great 2-3 matchup uh, Saturday night and, you know, the thing is is we get no break. Uh, you know, we, we work for this and now then we've got to turn around and uh, you know, we got three days to get ready for Normal West and then we turn around two days later and we got Southeast and two days later we got Lanphier. So the next three or four days uh, or th uh, next 10 days, uh, we've got uh, some work to do. Coach, uh, final thoughts before we uh, let you go. We always talk about once you get through Collinsville, you usually think you've got a pretty good handle of what kind of team this is. What kind of team is this? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, again, uh, if we're mentally prepared, we're really good. Uh, and we, we were prepared these last three days. Uh, we were prepared. We wanted to play. When you're mentally prepared, you shoot the ball. You play defense. You're a step quicker. When, you, when you're not prepared or you're not taking things too serious, you're a step slow. And we can't afford to be a step slow. So, you know, we, I, uh, I'm really excited about the group. Uh, but again, uh, we got to rely on that defense to be consistent every night because uh, the way we shot the ball uh, is not going to be. I don't know how many threes we hit in the, the four games, uh, but uh, uh, I think we shot the ball exceptionally well. Well, let's see real quick here. We had uh, 10... 18, 27, 36. 36, and I think last year we had 44. So over the two years, we've done okay. All right, Coach, congratulations to you and the team. Uh, this will certainly make it a happy new year for the Railers. And, uh, but like you said, the 2015 part of the season gets started very, very quick on Saturday night up in Normal. It sure does. And uh, we wish everybody a happy new year. And uh, uh, 
Sure, like to have your support up at Normal West because it's a tough place to play. It's a college-sized court, which makes things a little tougher for us. Uh, and plus the fact that they're a good basketball team. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. Enjoy this, and we will see you Saturday in Normal. Okay, thank you. Railers get the win. They win the Classic here, 47-34. We'll be back to wrap things up in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Huh? Railer Basketball on 96.3 WLCN and WLCNOnline.com is brought to you by Reps Gym, AAA Windows Siding and Doors, The Carpet House, Town and Country Bank, Lincoln IGA, Fist Rate Food Mart, Future Stars and Impact Studio Cheerleading and Tumbling, Lincoln Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Lincoln Printers, Jason Schmidt at Channel Seeds, TCC Verizon Wireless, Timbercrest Veterinary Services, Blades Hair and Nail Salon, LLC, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, Brow Incorporated, Schneider Chiropractic, Lincoln College, Big R, Stacy Family Pharmacy, Plute Heating and Cooling, St. Clara's Manor, BB Milling Company, Eaton Corporation, Jane's Hair Salon, Jim Examus Ford Lincoln, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, Headline Salon LLC, Family Custom Cleaners, Laundry, Tanning and U-Haul, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, and by Dr. Betsy Ulrich, Sugar Creek Orthodontics. <laughs> 